Hi there. In this video, I want to show you how to use curves to visualize landscapes instead of using contours. You can generate accurate landscapes by drawing in contours and raising them up to their respective heights. You can then use these contours, which have been raised up, to generate a surface or a mesh using, for example, the patch command. But often it's really hard to visualize exactly what you want your landscape to do um, by just drawing in the contours. The contours seem to be more like the result of the landscape formation instead of what you would use intuitively to design. I know that a lot of landscape firms still do design by drawing in contours and that takes a lot of skill and practice. So here I have a bunch of curves which I've set out. I've got these boundary curves, these blue ones, which sort of surround this topography that I've made. I've also got these um, orange curves which are sort of flat areas at, at specific heights that I set, like it might be an elevation of 1.2 meters or whatever it is. And I've got a couple of path curves. I might just offset this one to show you. Offset distance, I'm going to put at 750, and I set it to be both sides. Tolerance, one, that's fine. Cap, I'm going to do none. So I'm going to delete that original curve now. So this is a path edge. And I've also got valleys and ridges. For example, these two curves represent a lower point and these curves represent ridges. This curve is a path. So I'm going to take these curves. I'm going to open Grasshopper. So I'm going to right click this geometry container and set multiple geometries. I've just got this going into a sort objects by type, but that's unnecessary. Curves are coming out. Dividing the curves by length into points. And I've set that length to be one meter. These points have then been flattened as they're being dumped into the Delorny mesh component, which outputs an invalid mesh. So to see the edges, I've got a mesh edges component, and that outputs the edges like this. You can see the mesh edges in red, and between these mesh edges, the Delaunay mesh component has created a triangular face. This 1500 millimeter wide path has been respected by the Delaunay mesh component, and I have a smooth gradient upwards. The great thing about this script is it's very pure and it's procedural. So all I am using to create this topography are curves. This curve, I can move around its control point and this script will automatically update so that I can see the edges of this new landscape. And each time I move a point or change the curve, everything will change. So for example, if I take this curve and do the smooth command, uh, for me, that's control two. I'm gonna set it to be just X and Y. And if I change it to be like, I don't know, something like this, you'll see what happens. You'll see that now I have a smoother ridge and the whole component has updated. Once I have set my landscape as I wish, I can go into Grasshopper and then simply bake out the mesh. So now that I have designed my landscape with its accurate path edges and with its flat spots and ridges and valleys, I can then actually contour it. To do that, I'm going to do the bounding box option, get a full bounding box. I'll do the contour command, set the range, the height range. And I'm going to do it at, I don't know, let's say 500. Press OK. And there you go. I have automatically created a set of contours from the mesh, which was created by a bunch of curves. There are a couple of issues which you may encounter with this script. I'll give you the example here. At this point on the curve, you can see that there are some flat faces, which are unnatural. That's because the Delaunay mesh component simply takes the three closest points and triangulates a face between them. To fix this, I can simply create another curve and add it to the script. So I'm going to create a curve which starts at this point on the curve and ends up here. I'll take that curve, I'll go to the script, I'll create a duplicate geometry container and I'll right click and then set one geometry. Minimize that. And now you can see that this curve has also been divided into one meter increments. And those points have been added to the Delaunay mesh component. The other issue which you may encounter is overlapping. So for example, this ridge curve here on the right and these two valley curves down here, I do not want this ridge curve to interact with this lower left valley curve. And you can see that when I bend this curve over this way, it's starting to interact with that curve, which is not desirable. The quickest fix for this is to avoid bringing curves that you don't want to interact with each other next to each other. So for example, this ridge curve here, I'm not going to bend it too far over to the left where it might start to interact with this left-hand side valley curve. The only other way that I've found to fix this is to create individual meshes 
and then join them together later once you've baked them out. And when you do that, you can avoid that overlapping situation because this curve may not have this curve to interact with. So there you have it. This is the quickest and most accurate way I have found to visualize landscapes on the fly in Rhino. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and potentially tell your friends if you think they'll find it useful. Cheers.